Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Throwback Thursday. This is my show where I go back in time, take a look at older games, kind of walk through different um, model ranges, and kind of try and show uh, sort of like stuff from the past that might have informed games you play today. Uh, and this is going to be kind of a sad episode. Uh, earlier in the month, um, we actually had one of the kind of seminal game designers in tabletop wargaming and the pop culture wargaming pass away, Richard Hallowell. Uh, he's known for collaborating on things like Warhammer, small titles like that, and Warhammer 40,000. Um, but he's probably actually best known for a very famous uh, board game miniature game hybrid called Space Hulk. It took the trope of marines fighting in derelict spaceships against hordes and hordes of aliens, which was popular in pop culture at the time in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, uh, to the table. Um, it had two wonderful expansions called Deathwing and Gene Stealer. I've actually played through the original core box and Deathwing on the channel. Gene Stealer is a bit more of a challenge because it doesn't play so well solo, and this has been kind of one of my pandemic projects. Um, so I didn't, I haven't played through it, but I do luckily enough have access to the final first edition Space Hulk release, which is Space Hulk Campaigns. This book is um, taking Space Hulk into a more narratively driven format where your teams will kind of cross over from mission to mission and you have consequences when you play. In fact, if you wanted to, uh, it even gives you, if you, if you have multiple copies of, um, like all of the expansions for the game and the game itself, uh, play on like a 10 foot board with a huge map and then lead from like area to area, connecting all the separate maps together into like one giant mission if you want. Uh, I won't be doing that over the next four, four weeks. I'm gonna play through the four missions in the original Last Stand campaign, uh, which is in this book. It does use some expanded stuff from Gene Stealer, which is like the hybrids with their weapons and stuff. So you will get to see a bit of a taste of that. Um, but I thought in honor of Richard Hallowell, um, who had a huge influence on wargaming in general and the look of the games and the way these games get played, um, it would be good to go back through one of his classics and play another little mini campaign. So. Um, I recommend if you want to read um, sort of about his influences in his life and stuff, uh, Thomas Pernan did a great little blog post about him um, as he like the day after he passed, which you can read through to to get yourself sort of like informed on who he was and and how he impacted the business and how he impacted sort of the, the landscape of game design and wargaming. Um, but I'm going to jump right in and play one of his classics, Space Hulk: Man vs. Alien: in Desperate Battle, uh, the campaign last stand. So here it is, Space Hulk Campaigns, the one and only big book expansion for first edition Space Hulk, uh, which of course was the original box set and the two box expansions, Deathwing and Gene Stealer. And I'm all set up for the first campaign in here. Um, and this book was designed to basically allow you to play linked narrative battles set in a Space Hulk. Um, the first one is called Last Stand and you have the option of playing these either individually or all together as one giant massive map that you link together. And you'll see here um, that actually the um, the first of the, oh sorry, and there's actually a old printed Q&A, FAQ in here, break in. The first mission actually links up through this board section to the next mission if you play it. Then you go to mission two, which is the generator. So it's two squads that are basically doing things um, parallel. Uh, mission three and then mission four is the last stand in the center. The starship landed on the bleak planet, its rockets dying as it impacted on the broken, twisted surface. The huge plume of dust slowly settled to reveal the craft's battered exterior pitted by meteorites. One of its engines completely torn away, no lights flickered inside, no generators hummed, no hatches opened. The ship seemed dead. Throughout the Imperium, there's small outposts of space marines. They patrol the area of Imperial space and are ready to respond rapidly to defend planets against alien conquest or aid other Imperial forces to quell rebellions. These outposts can take many forms. Some are concealed within the hollowed out shells of asteroids. Some are starships or space stations in orbit around a sun or one of its planets. Others may be fortresses on uninhabited planets, usually sited far from the populated uh, lands in vast mountain ranges or on distant volcanic islands. To local people, the space marines may seem semi-mystical, godlike beings formidable and hidden from the common eye by the mists of rumor or legend. In the system of Pertus Magnus, there's an outpost held by the Ultramarines. <laughs> uh, it's buried beneath the surface of a small harsh planet outermost from the star. Above the base, icy gales whip up fine glass-like sand and scour the rocks into strange tortured shapes. The atmosphere contains only gases deadly to the human system. During the months-long night, many of these gases cool to liquid and contorted rocky statues rise out of a turgid, poisonous sea. The garrison is rotated from time to time, staying in the outpost for months, sometimes even years, depending upon the chapter's other duties. When the alien starship landed on the planet, this outpost was under command of Captain Lazarus. Stationed with him were six squads of space marines, armed with some of the chapter's ancient honor suits of Terminator Honor. 
The garrison duties were almost over. The relief contingent was due any day. The outpost scanned the starship for signs of life or of the energy flows that might indicate survivors. There was nothing. The craft was completely dead. No man could survive the planet's atmosphere unprotected by a powered suit. Without the heat, the blood would quickly freeze. The scouring winds would strip the flesh from the man's bones. All life aboard, it seemed, was had died long ago. The crippled starship landing uh, before its automatic systems were shut down forever. No one was sent to investigate the derelict ship. There were so many preparations for the departure as soon as the relief arrived. Two days later, they get the gene stealers attacked. And you can see here this wonderful Kev Walker illustration of Terminators fighting gene stealers. First one is called Break In. The Space Marines were expecting nothing. They were prepared to leave the outpost and were scattered throughout the underground complex. When the outer defenses were breached without warning, there was only just time for them to put on their Terminator armor. As the gene sealers broke through the base proper, the artificial atmosphere was sucked out and the plant's own toxic atmosphere seeped in. The first gene sealers appeared in one of the main access corridors, right next to the Space Marines' living quarters. They entered the base via service and maintenance tunnels from the surface and broke in through the roof of the access corridor. It wasn't clear to Captain Lazarus if this was a feint attack or the main thrust of the gene stealer assault. He couldn't chance committing more space marines to the area until he knew the full extent of the enemy's strength. The single squad cut off in the living quarters would have to try to close the gene stealer break-in on their own. They were trapped and fighting for their lives. He was trying to block the gene stealer's uh, entry into the access corridor, so the gene stealer player is trying to take control of the living quarters uh, section of the complex. Forces, Squad Augustus, uh, one sergeant with a power glove, uh, one space marine with assault cannon and power glove, one space marine lightning claws, and two with storm bolters and power gloves. The marine player starts with five blips and receives one blip per turn as reinforcements, and then the lettered blips are actually in here um, as non psyker hybrids armed with like a variety of small guns, and then heavy bolter, last cannon, auto cannon, missile launcher, and conversion beamer. Hybrids do work slightly differently to regular gene stealers. They have four AP when they're revealed, as opposed to the six that they have when they're um, blips or gene stealers, uh, and they die on uh, much better rolls typically than anything else. Uh, so they also s operate slightly differently for AP. Moving forward is still one, just like a Marine. Um, they can move sideways. Actually, they can't move sideways, but they can move um, two to move sideways. Uh, where is it? Heavy weapons can move a back. It's the same basically for everything except for turn 90. Uh, regular ones do it for free like a gene stealer. The other ones do it for one. Uh, they can set overwatch two, jam cleared weapons, initiate close assault, and open and close doors. Unlike... Um, like rolling to kill and destroy pure strains where it's usually a six with a storm bolt. It's only on a four plus for a hybrid, which is way easier. Uh, their guns are the same as the Marine guns. So you have uh, typically a bolter as opposed to a storm bolter. So it rolls one dice instead of two. Bolt pistols, one dice instead of two. Uh, but only shoots 12 range. Uh, heavy bolters, um, which are two shots and pretty much the same as bolters. Las guns, which are terrible, uh, as as would be tradition. Las pistols, las cannons, which are amazing. They just kill you if they touch a hybrid. And two plus they kill anything else. Plasma guns, four plus, four plus for blips and pure strains. Two plus for hybrids. Three plus for marines. Plasma pistols, uh, much the same. Heavy plasma guns can fire different ways, and Nemesis uh, close combat weapons which are for Grey Knights uh, obviously are slightly different. Blip pool gets mixed in, and there's a whole list of who they are for when they arrive. We're just gonna mix them together. Marines, the sergeant deploys back here in the main quarters, and then the other Marines are deployed as I like. So I put the assault cannon here with the long corridor. So, uh, sorry, the sergeant should be here. I mixed them up already with the red stripe. Uh, two Marines with bolters, and then the getting up close and personal is going to be the um, lightning claw Marine. All the genius are under play on the square marked G. They come through the hole in the roof, which is right here. Um, it costs one AP to jump through the hole. They don't have to lurk. Uh, genius sealers move first. The Space Marine players can secure the entry area by getting the Space Marine onto the square G. Uh, they win by um, securing the area, which means ending on it with no Gene Stealers there. Um, the Gene Stealers win by killing all the Space Marines. As we're playing a campaign, I have to record who dies, <laughs> and then the Space Marine pl uh, Gene Stealer player, which is going to be the AI, will record whether the entry area is still open. Let's jump right in. Turn one. Marine players, of course, going first. Uh, we get five blips that will get deployed during the first turn. So, mixing these up. Four. Five. You could roll a d6 for command points, but we're doing this old school, so at least once I'm going to draw a five. Sweet. My assault cannon has ten shots, and I think we're ready for round one. Easy. We're going to go one, two to open the door, three, four, and then I think we just spend two of our CPs down to three to go on Overwatch. This brings going to go one, two to open the door, three, four. I think he's happy where he is because nobody can get to him this turn. Uh... Uh, Lightning Claw Marine, I think you just go. You go one, sorry, two, turn two, 
three, four. Everybody else is going to try and get moving forward. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, just to move Sarge up with the rest of the CPs. He's going to go one, two, three, four. Team Soda Player has got his five uh, CPs, or his um, five blips. We're going to have the first one show up for one, two, three to open the door, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. And then these other ones will just arrive, basically. Round two, CPs. Five again. Oh, oh, it's almost like I put it there. I, I didn't know. You're kind of happy, but you could just go one, two, and Overwatch. You could just go three, four, and not even care. Because they're not going to get to you this turn. Go one, two, three, four. Mm, five, six. You're going to go one, two. Actually, you're going to wait. You're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And use the rest of CPs. You're going to go four. You're going to go one, two, three, four. And all our CPs are gone. That's turn. I'm doing this on a timer, too. Normally, you'd have like the, the two minute timer or whatever. I it's, I don't know. Uh, so, another blip arrives. They don't work, but they can go in any order. So, it's going to be one, uh, two, three, four, five, six. These guys will end. And I will use my house rule where if there are um, like more than three behind a door, they won't just stop. They just clog up and I don't have to move them <laughs> with the AI. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've been shooting those doors on the way, but it did cause them to jam up, which is good. It's a new turn. What's my CPs this turn? Just one. Well, of course. Fire. One. Do we get sixes? Yes. We destroy the door. It's revealed to be D hybrid. The last pistol. This guy gets revealed to be. Oh, sorry, he doesn't even get revealed because he just stays there. So you move again and fire and kill him because he's dead on fours. Reveal this guy to be a gene stealer, single gene stealer. I think we set Overwatch there to be done. We go you and you go one, two, three, four. They should have all been back one. I forgot you can't move diagonally. Um, so I've been three, four, five, six, seven. They would have been back like this. It would have changed anything because the door would just open, but they should both be back too. So he should have been back here actually when that opened. You can't move diagonally, Ash. <laughs> so if you're going to be here, you're going to go one, two, three, four. No. So there we are. Or you go three, four and go sideways like that. Charge goes and goes one, two. Mm, three and then four, five to go on Overwatch just in case this guy dies. You're going to go one, two, three, four. Try and flank him. You're going to go one, two, three. Open the door for four. Actually, we wouldn't even need to do that if we just shot three times, Ash. And you miss. And you miss. And you kill. Uh, so the third one, he blew the door and then moved. Don't jam when you're not on sustained fire, or on overwatch rather. So that's the marine turn. Charges, he can make it, so one, two, three, four, five, six to fight. Uh, so five shots, first one, misses, second one, misses, third one, misses, fourth one, kills him. So now it's one, two, three, four, five, six to him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So they're just gonna keep going this way. So one, they convert into jet. One psycho with a conversion beamer, why not? Well, we get one chance to blast him as he moves in. It's on fours, kills him. This little guy's gonna go one, two. Revealed to be hybrid C. Brought a las gun to this fight, good for him. So, so we get to sustain fire him again, and we kill him. For this one, we'll go one, two, three, and be revealed to be three gene stealers. Uh oh. And those can get placed close to. Oh, first shot for that move. Dodge uh, jams him. So that was three. And then it's four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six. If the gene stealers can strafe, it's the Marines can't. Last guy is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So he's gonna keep going this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. And remain hidden. We did okay. We managed to not get destroyed by a conversion beamer. We have six CPs this turn. Sweet. Reinforcement arrives and goes one. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five. That means we could set up the assault cannon. I think the first thing we do is 
move and fire. Sorry, clear our jam for two, move and fire. On a six, we kill that front gene stealer. Then we move, move and fire one on sixes, kill him. You don't get sustained fire on this. Uh, move and fire two on sixes to kill the next one. <laughs> we kill him too, but don't jam because it's not Overwatch. This gets revealed. It's just a single gene stealer. Move and fire three. Move and fire, actually, do we just sit still now for sustained fire? Sit still for sustained fire. Four, kill him. We could have moved. I think it's way too much for us to get there and go on Overwatch. It's gonna be like one, two, three, four, five. But we could stand back two and send the, the Lightning Claw Marine. So stand back for two, and then Lightning Claw Marine would go, I have four CPs left, and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to there. That's what we do, send him forward. We're overwatching now, and all our CPs are gone. And then you're gonna go one, two, three, open the door for four, instead of assault cannon ammo. You're gonna go four there, and that'll be turn. One new blip. Um, we'll go into reserve, and then this one's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's gonna go this way. So one, two, three, four, five, and lurk. If it can't get to me. It won't. Uh, it won't come through. Arrives for one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, new turn. What's our CP count? Let's take you underneath. Five. Not bad. Not getting hosed on CPs. I like it. So who's gonna go first? Well, I mean, you could conceivably blow this. So one, two, three shots moving. So first one, no, second one, yes, blows the door. So that was one, two, three, four. Mm, five, try to shoot the door. Nope. Mm, I don't think you can turn and shoot. Six, shooting the door. Actually, you'd, you'd be able to line of fire now. So you wouldn't shoot the door. So you just go six sustained fire to shoot the door. Nope. And it takes it down to three. So we're good with that. We're gonna go one. This guy's gonna convert and be G. Laz cannon hybrids, <laughs> wheat. Well, uh, he's ready to rock and roll. That was one. Two, three, four to assault. One of these guys is usually minus two, and I'm plus two for my uh, my lightning claws. So they roll one dice at minus two, and then the marine rolls two dice at plus two. Be the hybrid. Uh, he gets negative one to my five, so he gets sliced. Three left. So I think we go one, two, move and fire. Three dice on fives on that door, blows it, and we get on a nine ammo left. So it's two, three, four, so this door's gone. We go five, six. And go on Overwatch. One, and go five, six on Overwatch. We want to be back one. Yeah, because we want it to charge this way. <laughs> so we're gonna stay there. Whoever arrives, this guy goes, one, two, and is it revealed to be I? Oh, it's a missile, which is gonna shoot the Terminator. This is gonna kill Marine on a three plus. Uh, it is no bueno. So we are gonna overwatch a shot as he moves out. This is why we did this, try and try and cover this poor fool. So Saw Cannon loses a shot on a five, or sorry, actually, it's on a three. Saw Cannon burst against a hybrid, it's on a three, yeah. Can we, can we vaporize him? Yep, we do. Before he gets the fire. New blip arrives, one, two, three, four, five, six. Got dicey there for a second. How many CPs do we get this turn? Try and seal this breach. Five, again. We can't make it in one go. So I think we go and just try and push through. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. I'll get revealed to be three. Ugh. Three, four, Five to turn, six to fire. We go seven to go full auto <laughs> and just murder everything in range. Uh, so we shoot everybody in line of sight, which doesn't include him because it's the front of your base. So first one, dead. Second one, almost a triple. Uh, doesn't die, third one, dies. He's down to three. And then we're gonna have to fire again down to one and we're not gonna get overwatch now. We kill this guy, I was down to two shots and now we go down to one shot and our last, cause we didn't kill him. Oh my God. Ha! 
It finally dies. No CPs left, so we're just gonna go one, two, three, I guess. No, because he might die. One, two, and just stay there. We'll go one, two, three, sorry, and the first two moves will be shots. One, nope. Two, the turn and fire doesn't work. Uh, three, and then four to move, open this. Sarge will go, one, two, three, four. We'll go one, two, three, four. It's falling apart of the 11th hour. All right, so another blip. It's gonna arrive. Bam, and immediately convert uh, into two gene stealers. So that's one, and they convert as close as possible. Two, three, four, five, six. Just end up on top. Okay, well, <laughs> he's almost out of ammo. He didn't blitz that hollow I needed him to. What do we got? Three CPs this turn. Well, you can take a shot and kill him. And then go, uh, that's all your ammo. And then go, what that was, one, two, three, four. We got lightning claws. <laughs> one, two, three, four to fight. Gene Stealer, two dice, plus two. That's an eight, can't beat that. So we smash him. And then we can keep pushing. We will use all of our CPs. One, two, three. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. four. And secure the room. All right, we can do this. Blip arrives. We're gonna have to fight it with the lightning claws no matter what. Bam, one arrives. It's beaten. <laughs> Dude with a pole pistol. Oh, hi. <laughs> so he's got three shots now. Nice, on a six though, it kills my lightning claw guy. Bang, nope. Second shot, bang, nope. Third shot, bang. Wow, oh, no, kills him with his last AP and takes the room. He went through all those geniuses and then a dude with a pistol just like drops out of the ceiling and caps you. <laughs> That's gonna be a problem. Okay, well, we got shot to death by the the gunslinging gene stealer at the end of all this. What do we got, or the hybrid, I guess. We got four CPs this round. Sarge, one, two, three, four to move and fire on fours. Nope. Mm, five, move and fire. Kill him. Uh, and then can I get there? Six, seven, eight, no. So I go six, and then seven, eight to go on Overwatch. All my CPs. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, because I don't want my assault cannon to die. Reload his magazine, as he's totally out of bullets, and get 10 shots back for 4 AP. Well, we lost the assault terminator. Let's see who drops out of the ceiling to fight Sarge. You can do this, Sergeant Augustus. It's two gene stealers. All right, so the first one drops in, or the blip drops in, converts, and then it's one, two. He gets plus one to this. He might live. Oh, sorry, it's two shots first of the Storm Bolter. One, kills him, good job. And then it's one, two, three shots before they fight. So the first one, nope. The second one, nope. The third one, nope. And then they fight. Oh, this is it, Sarge. You're in trouble. Uh, you get plus one of the white dice. Gene Sword rolls the Yoda, or the green dice. Whoa, he's a hero. Seven, smashes him in the face. Out of here. Uh, and that's probably gonna be game because... Actually, I, I think even just with four I get there. I've got four CPs though. Uh, and that means I can go one, two, three, four, secure the spot, even go on Overwatch for two more. One, two, three, four to go on Overwatch. Back up two and go on Overwatch. Go on Overwatch. Augustus and his men have successfully sealed the breach into the living quarters of the Marines here on the planet. The cinematic though of this idiot dropping it out of the ceiling, scrying, bah, 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 as doves fly by like John Woo style, and capping my poor assault marine. Meanwhile, that means we've sealed this entrance, and the assault marine is dead for future missions. And so you have it, mission one, break in from the um, last stand Space Marine campaign um, in Space Hulk. Uh, and a big uh, just fond sort of send off to Richard Hallowell. He was a hugely influential part of my game design uh, and part of my life. I played Space Hulk when I was nine or 10 years old. Uh, basically until now you're watching me still play it this is the, this is my copy of space hulk from back then that i touched up and refurbished in like 2007 2008 maybe uh and i mean i've added to it since then obviously and run through a whole bunch of campaigns for you guys to watch and hope you enjoyed that so thanks for watching we'll see you in two weeks for the next mission pull out a mash
I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Desperate Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.